Hi everyone, it's Nicole Wilkins with Fitness RX for Women, and this is my next question answer segment where I took your questions from Facebook and I'm going to answer them for you today. The first question I have is Hi Nicole, so I was wondering what your diet is like on a non training day. Do you tend to reduce calories, carb intake, or anything because you aren't using them quite as much? Or do you eat about the same proportions on rest days? Just curious about your take on this. Thank you. So the difference between training days and non-training days is on training days, I usually have a little bit higher carbohydrates, especially around training times. So pre-workout and post-workout, I may have an additional 20 to 30 carbs before and after, especially if it's like a leg day or a muscle group that I'm really trying to improve on, like my back or my shoulders. Um, so the higher the uh, intensity of the training, you know, usually a little bit higher the carbohydrates. But for the most part, on the days I'm not training, uh, my diet is, I still incorporate carbohydrates, I still incorporate fats and proteins, um, it's still very balanced. The next question is, how can I increase quad muscle without using a squat or Smith machine? I have problems with my lower back. Well, obviously, for those who don't know what quads are, it's the front of the leg. So in order to strengthen that muscle without doing squats, you could do the leg press. You could also do the leg extension. Um, but I would highly recommend you strengthen your lower back. Maybe do some hyperextensions, get deep tissue massage therapy, figure out what is causing the ailment in your back. Maybe you need to stretch more often. Um, maybe you need to, you know, just do some back strengthening exercises because squats are really good for not just the, the quads but also for um, you know your hamstrings and your glutes. It's a, a total body exercise really. It's a good compound movement. So uh, you don't have to do anything heavy and if it hurts to put the weight on your shoulders because that compresses the spine a bit, try holding dumbbells to your side instead. Keep the chest up, keep all your weight on your heels, and really stick your butt back so you're doing the exercise properly. If you're rounding your body forward as you squat down, you're definitely going to put a lot more strain on the lower back. So, um, but yeah, try, try leg press. Your back is stabilized in a seat, and you're still using those quadricep muscles. Hi Nicole, I have a meal plan I stick to, however I have an issue to stay on it when I go backpacking for two days. I do bring with me Quest protein bars, but eating that all day won't give me much energy for long distance hiking. What would be your food suggestions as far as protein and carbs go so I don't go off track too much? Bringing cooked meal on a hot summer day would be a little challenging. Thank you. Okay, well for this, I would definitely bring a cooler. You know, you can get small coolers from Target and it kind of looks like a purse. Get an ice pack or two and put that inside the bag. Bring nuts, bring um, bags of rice, bring uh, potatoes, bring fruit. Fruit doesn't require any cooking at all. Bring chicken already cooked if it's cold. Um, obviously you're hiking so you're going to have to rough it a little bit, you're not going to have a microwave, but making sure that you have a cooler with you, and you're right, you don't just want to have Quest bars, you want to bring other food as well um, to ke help keep you energized throughout those days. But you should have no problem bringing, um, even if you do have meats, over one day or so if you have a little bit of um, ice packs with you to keep them cold. As long as you're not sitting in the direct sunlight, they'll be fine. Hi Nicole, like most people, I wear a heart rate monitor most every day in the gym. Sometimes the caloric expenditure that it shows seems too good to be true even after the most strenuous workouts. Do you wear a monitor and how accurate do you think they are? Well, I do think that heart rate monitors are much more accurate than the number you see on a lot of the machines. So make sure that your height, your weight, your age, um, whether you're male or female, all of that stuff is in your is programmed in your watch, and then it will be more accurate. Obviously, if you're a male and you're 250 pounds, you're going to be burning more calories than a female who's 150 pounds. 
So make sure that those numbers are accurate. Uh, but you know, if you're burning five or six hundred calories, yes, it, it's it's awesome to see. But that's also very easy to eat um, afterwards as well. So. Make sure that you keep those numbers inside the watch accurate. I do like to wear it because I like to see kind of how hard I'm working and if my heart rate is staying within a, a zone that is um, beneficial. And it's also good to see um, the strength of your heart while you're training. If, if the number, if your heart rate goes back down to uh, rest, if it decreases fast after you're done training, that's a sign of a healthy heart. Um, you know, if you have to really kick up the intensity really hard in order to get that number up, that's also a good sign of a healthy heart. So, yes, I do think they are accurate. And the last question I have for this week is, do you eat the same things every day? And if so, how do you deal with boredom? Do you do refeed days? I actually do eat the same things every day. I have never had an issue with, um, eating the same things. I, I like the same foods. It's easier for me. <laughs> I get overwhelmed if I have too many choices. I do have cheat day, uh, cheat meals and I um, will sometimes have cheat days and I'm normal just like everybody else. But um, as far as dealing with boredom, I really don't, I don't obsess too much about it. Um, I know that some people like to cook up different recipes with healthy foods and I do some of that sometimes, but I'm really not the best cook. So mix up the seasonings. If you add foods together, like if you instead of just eating oatmeal and egg whites, you can mix them together and make protein pancakes. That gives a little bit of different consistency. Um, that may help mix things up a bit. You know, have quinoa instead of brown rice. Or I mean, there's infinite ways that you can make it. A little bit more exciting you know have put some salsa in your food and on your egg whites um, I don't know maybe somebody who is a better cook can post underneath this video some ideas that they have to mix it up and uh, prevent boredom so that's all I have for you guys this week until next week keep asking your questions on the fitness rx for women Facebook page and I'll be back every Friday to answer them for you until next week keep living the fit life